Good morning, friends. This is uh, Professor Sheetal Varu of uh, KITS College of Engineering. Welcome to the second session of tachymetry. Today we will be looking at tachymetric systems. We had learned the basics in the first semester. Uh, sorry, in the first uh, lesson. We now move on to the systems of tachymetry and we learn more about the types. Okay, so in this lecture. Uh, we will be focusing on systems of tachymetry and stadia method uh, which are the which are also the subsystems of the tachymetric methods we will be looking also looking at the movable hair method uh, in this we will be uh, first looking at the uh, various types or classifications broadly the tachymetric system okay uh, i had mentioned earlier that tachymetry is a system and it may consist of a tachymeter or it may uh, be using an ordinary theodolite as well so uh, in the tachymeter we will be using the stadia method we will be using the uh, non stadia methods also that is the uh, tangential method will be there uh, in addition to that, we will be also looking, looking at special the theodolites. This is the overall uh, systems. Okay, in this system, uh, in the tachymetric system, it has it consists of the fixed hair method and movable hair method, which are the stadia methods. The movable hair method is also called as the substance substance method. Uh, in the ordinary uh, theodolite method, we will be looking at the tangential system uh, as a uh, method of non uh, tachymetric instrument method and also the substance bar method and then we will be moving on to the special instruments which are the auto detection tachymeters in the uh, next sessions. As we had mentioned earlier the principle common to all the system is to calculate the horizontal distance between the two points uh, suppose A and B and the distance in elevations the height difference between them uh, and as well as well as the elevation of the star position which is at a higher elevation. So, first we will be looking at uh, uh, the fixed hair method. Now, in this method the angle of the angle at the instrument position O is subtended by a known short distance along a, uh, along a staff kept at the position B. Now, uh, with the help of the stadia diaphragm we are able to uh, we are able to measure the we are able to uh, what do you say we can we, we can measure the star, staff distance and we can record them and the difference between the top hair and the middle hair is called as the stadia interval uh, and it is given by the uh, denomination i the readings of the staff intercept uh, the intercept made on the staff is denoted by the uh, terminology a small s corresponding to all the three wires uh, on whose the readings are taken the distance formula is given by k s plus c where k is the multiplying constant and c is the additive constant s is the staff intercept. So, this is for a uh, this is a standard uh, equation we will move on ok. Now, when we move when we look at the fixed hand method of the stadia method there will be three cases which we will be discussing or we will be focusing one is called as the fixed hand method where the line of sight is horizontal and the staff is held vertical. The second is the line of sight is inclined and the staff is held vertical. In this second case, we will be having two more cases. The angle of elevation can be either uh, uh, and the angle of uh, the th inclination, not elevation, sorry. The angle of inclination can be either inclined upwards or it can be downwards. That means, it is an angle of elevation or a depression and not, uh, not a horizontal line of sight. And the third case we will be discussing is the line of sight. Uh, is inclined and the staff is held normal <coughs> sorry now this third case is a uh, difficult uh, condition because holding the staff normal that is perpendicular to the perpendicular to the line of sight is a very difficult task and f practically impossible so we are uh, not going to discuss this in much in detail as it is a uh, it is uh, it is not practically feasible it is not a very practical solution the most popular method is to hold the staff vertical and take readings on those uh, staff whether it is in the elevation or in depression so uh, let us now look at the distance elevation formula for the horizontal line of sight now uh, you have to understand uh, this sketch first so, if you like look at the sketch the O where the you can see the double convex uh, lens uh, fused together that is the place where the your uh, objective of the telescope is there. 
and in the figure uh, where you see the uh, denomination small ab lower case characters that is the diaphragm that is the plane of the diaphragm and uh, the position b where the uh, staff ab acb is you can see is the position where the staff is held so the reading in the intercept made on the staff is given by the denomination s now f1 and f2 are called as the conjugate focal lengths uh, as the principles of lens formula now uh, some more uh, terminologies m you can see in the figure is the point which is the vertical axis of the instrument that is the tachometer okay the axis which is given by the plumb of the axis uh, plumb line of the uh, instrument and uh, you can see a, a denomination small d the small d is called as the distance between the convex lens that is the objective lens and the center of the instrument uh, denominated by m that is also the point where the foci has to be concentrated the foci uh, may or may not fall on the point m but we uh, make it a point to uh, focus the uh, to make the foci fall on the point m using a lens called as the analytical lens now this is a very prominent feature of the external focusing telescope a internal focusing telex telescope also it is it is almost analytical so that is uh, so the focus uh, the focus uh, the uh, falls on the uh, point m that is the vertical axis now in all these things you can see the terminology capital d so what is d d is the distance from the instrument to the staff intercept and that is what is the uh, problem here or that is what is the solution which we have to find out so our main objective in ho in all in all this whole process is to find the distance d without using chaining or taping and that is where tachymetry comes in hand so the distance d can be very small or it can be very large also it uh, normally for small distances we can use a tape up to say 30 meters but beyond 30 meters uh, we have to use multiple tapes and chaining and if the ground is very unbroken uh, ground then it becomes very difficult and that's where the that's where uh, tachymetry is going to come in useful okay so having seen the earlier figure we can understand that f1 is the horizontal uh, we have discussed these things m is the focal uh, center of the instrument corresponding to the vertical axis so just take a minute uh, take a few uh, seconds to look at the screen to understand uh, what are the uh, term, terms which we have used which i already explained you uh, here you can see the focus uh, the distance uh, if you if you look at the earlier figure uh, so there is a triangle uh, form there is a equal there is a isosceles triangle formed by the triangle which is formed at the uh, if you considered o as the vertex o the lens uh, o position the position of the o at the center of the lens and the triangle formed by o a b and o a b capital and o a b small you can see that you can see that uh, the triangles are similar so since in they are similar the ratio of f1 to f f1 upon f2 is corresponding to the s upon i uh, where s is the staff intercept and i is the uh, steady interval so that is what you see here and that is what the basic principle of tachymetry tells us all about moving on uh, we see how the derivation is uh, arrived at so to arrive at uh, at the derivation the final derivation we use the lens formula uh, which is uh, which we we have learned in the 8th or 9th standard of physics 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon f2 plus 1 upon f1 they are all they are also called as the conjugate focal lens now multiplying uh, we, this is a derivation so what we do is our ultimate objective is to obtain the uh, distance d in the form of the known parameters that is the focal length the the steady intercept the staff intercept and the distance uh, d small d so you can see we have done that by multiplying by terminology ff1 and for, finally uh, we add d to both sides and we come to a equation which is given by d is equal to f upon i s plus f plus d now here uh, f upon i is known as the multiplying constant which is further called as 
uh, which is denominated by the capital letter K and the uh, terminology F plus D focal length plus small d is denominated by the capital letter C which is called as the additive constant C. Now, in uh, I had explained earlier that uh, we in uh, tachymetry we want to use this formula, but at the same time uh, we want to simplify this process by using uh, by making the multiplying constant k is equal to 100 and c is equal to 0 and that is where the role of the tachymetric instrument is very important to make the formula very easy to work upon. Now, uh, having understood the line of sight uh, horizontal, we will look at uh, the line of sight inclined. Now, uh, when we talk about tachymetry, we do not encounter uh, very plain grounds. It is but natural to encounter grounds which are either highly situated, highly above or uh, in a depressions and that is where tachymetry is useful and that is why if you look at the same, the same sketch which we had seen earlier which is now inclined the whole set of the similar triangles formed by OAB and OAB capital and small are now inclined in a are, uh, are twisted about in a inclined manner making an uh, vertical angle of theta with the horizontal. And now we can look at, we can understand that uh, some more terms have been added here you can see capital V which was not there earlier you can see capital L which was not there earlier. Now L is nothing but the D which was in the earlier figure. So, the D in this figure, the capital D in this figure is nothing but L cos theta, okay, where theta is the angle made by the vertical uh, to the inclination by the horizontal to the uh, inclined line of sight. The inclined line of sight corresponding to the middle hair, which is again uh, passing through the lens and which is meeting the staff at the point C, capital C, okay. You can look at the figure, capital ACB is the staff at point Q. Okay, do you get me? So, all the terms you can, uh, has been mentioned here, P is the instrument axis, M is the position of instrument uh, center position, uh, Q is the staff station, O is the optical center of the uh, instrument, A, C, B is the points corresponding to the staff, uh, crosshair S is the staff intercept, I is the steady interval, O is the inclination of the line of sight from the horizontal, uh, L is the length M C which is corresponding to the earlier D d now is equal to l cos theta which is m q dash and v is the vertical intercept at q then this v is the uh, height by which the staff has gone up in elevation with respect to the central line of uh, sight and small h now what is this small h small h is a uh, it is the nothing but the middle hair reading the middle the reading corresponding to the middle hair of the instrument and it it corresponds to the height if you look at the sketch it corresponds to the distance cq or qc whatever you can see okay right so uh, further we derived the formula when we uh, solve that uh, formula we come to uh, a distance equation which is given by ks cos square theta plus c cos theta here s is the staff intercept k is the multiplying constant theta is the vertical angle made to the uh, horizontal and c is the additive constant. Again, we can derive the uh, vertical intercept v uh, with respect to the once we have obtained the d, we can we can simply write v is equal to d tan theta also if we have obtained the value of v and v can be derived independently of d also by using the formula k s sin 2 theta upon 2 plus c sin theta. Okay, these equations are called as the distance and elevations formulas for inclined line of sight. Okay, so that is the major objective for which we have been doing all these things. Uh, so moving on, we come to the now further. Uh, we have obtained the vertical intercept till now. We are still not obtained the uh, RL or the, or the elevation of the staff station. In order to obtain the RL of the instrument station, we have to add the instrument the elevation or the RL of the instrument axis uh, to the to middle hair reading which is denoted by H and we also add the vertical intercept which is given by V capital V and from that we derive uh, the uh, minus R. So, R is the reading taken uh, it is the reading corresponding to the middle hair at the staff station and H in this formula is the height of the instrument. So, the, the same way in for, de, for depression it will be uh, 
uh, only v will be subtracted because v is downwards. Okay. So, thank you all of you. Uh, we have come to the end of the session uh, on fixed hair method, which is one of the tachymetric methods of stadia methods. In the next lesson, we will be focusing on ordinary uh, theodolite methods uh, of tachymetry system, to which are uh, nothing but the substance and tangential systems. Thank you.